great singing choir. That was amazing. Also, let me, before I forget, Sunday night, too, on the 30th, the youth meeting, right after that, Addie will be giving her presentation on the trip to Africa out here in the fellowship building. We'll have some snacks and stuff going on, so we'll be praying about that. Boy, I tell you what, as the choir was singing, I was thinking, as talking about uh, the stormy seas, and man, I, as oftentimes, man, in my Christian life, I look back and I face things. Brother Mike Marsh, I thought, how in the world am I going to get through this? How in the world am I going to make it across? How in the world are we going to get to the other side? But I, my mind went to racing back to time after time after time. Uh, God's children come up against the river. They come up against the Red Sea. Uh, they was out on the sea and the storm was raging. But every single time, there's a man come by. There's a man come by and made a way. Ain't you glad he's a way maker this morning? Uh, we couldn't get nowhere without him. Man, every which way I go, Tanner, I get fouled up, don't know which way to go. But thank God I'm serving a way maker. He knows the way. You know why he knows the way? He is the way. He is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. There's no other way or no other better route that I'd rather go than follow my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who's got a song on your heart this morning? Somebody, surely. Got it. All right, come on, Dutch boy. Bless them, Lord. While they're getting ready, I want to share something. I was going to, I was going to tell it the other night. I hope that I don't take up too much time. But I tell you, there's power in prayer, Heath. I told you this story the other day. I was going to tell it to the Lord pressed it on my heart. I was listening to a preacher preach the other day. I was out working, and he was telling a story about his sister-in-law. His sister-in-law had uh, been diagnosed with MS. He had muscular sclerosis. And uh, <clears throat> said it was a very bad case of muscular sclerosis, MS. And said it got so bad that uh, she lost control of pretty much every muscle that she had. Said uh, her neck was, was hanging over. And uh, the only thing that she could do was talk. That's it. That's all she could do. And uh, he said he went to her one day and he said, uh, he called her sis. said, sis. He said, uh, one of these days when we get to heaven, you won't have to worry about this no more. You ain't going to have to worry about all this. And everything's going to be all right. She said, Don, today's not my day. And uh, so time went on, time went on. And uh, he, he got to telling about, about nine years later. He said one night he was in the dry service that he'd ever been in. Said nobody was moving. Said it was just dry. He said, and about that time, he looked back, and that wheelchair that she was in was rolling down the center aisle. She come down to this front of the church, and she said, Don, today's my day. And he was preaching about the man that was at the pool of Bethesda, and how that he had waited for 38 years. He'd been sitting in this that same state right there beside the pool. When the water moved, he didn't ever get a chance to get in. But that, wasn't the, 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 that day wasn't his day. But one day Jesus walked by the pool that day. And it wasn't an angel that had come down and stirred the waters then. It was, it was God in man form had come down to the pool. And he said, I, I've seen you since day one at this state. And she looked up at him and said, Don, today's my day. And they anointed her with oil. And they began to pray over that woman. He said about that time she slapped that, the side of that wheelchair and she stood straight up. <laughs> she sat right back down and she said, Don, anoint me one more time and pray one more time over me. And about that time she slapped them old hands on that wheelchair. And she stood straight up. And she started praising the Lord and shouting all over the church. Said she got in such a big way that she ran out into the parking lot. She ran all around and she loved, she loved Taco Bell. And they said she ran up inside Taco Bell. And they said there wasn't no more tacos going out of that <laughs> building that day. I tell you, there's power when God's involved. No matter what we go through, it might look bleak and it might look like there's no hope. But I'm telling you this, when Jesus, when the, the, when the day comes and it's your day and God touches you, things change. Amen. I thought I'd share that with you this morning. I hope I didn't take up much time. But you may be sitting here this morning and you may think, my situation, is, it just seems like it's never going to come to pass. But I'm glad that the God of heaven knows, amen, and his hand is not slack concerning his promise. And he'll come through whenever it's, whenever it's that day. Amen. Y'all pray for us today. Some say he was just 
the son of Joseph. A carpenter that worked with his hands. And some say he must have been a teacher like Elijah, Moses, and Abraham. But he walked up Calvary, they watched him die on a tree. They said he must be just an ordinary man. But all I said, sir, could I tell you a story? A 
somehow you'll never go hungry again. He just looked up and smiled and we spoke for a while as I told him all Jesus had done. And right there in that place, through mercy and grace by faith, another sinner was won. Oh, but look where he brought us for the blood he shed on that old rug tree. It all reminds us back when we were lost out at sea. Jesus broke all our chains free. Oh, remind us when we see a sinner in need. We haven't always Hallelujah. I'll let you sing that way. Touching Jesus. Y'all pray for me. Stood on the bank of a wide region river. First thing that I get across. I paid my way through some valleys and deserts, believing I'd never get lost. I stood at the foot of what felt like Mount Everest, when I'd have strength for the climb, but through each valley. Yeah. 
he don't get tired of helping me out, ain't you? You know, there's been some folks in my life, I ain't going to lie, I've got tired of helping them. It seemed like I just never did help herself. I'm glad God don't get that way with me, brother. Amen. Anybody, anything on your heart? Anybody? Obey the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Glad he saved me too or I wouldn't be here preaching to you. Amen. I hate to think poor I'd be. Amen. I'd probably be dead somewhere, Dwayne Ray. He didn't just save me spiritually. He saved this old, you say that flesh. About, I ain't talking about he saved it from sin. He saved it from dying. I ought to be dead somewhere, Stephen. But thank God. His grace and his mercy looked out for me till I got things fixed up spiritually, amen. amen. Now if I get kicked out of here, I, I ain't too worried about it. But boy, I used to be scared to death. I'd lay down at night, lay my head down, I couldn't sleep, man. That's why people say, well, once you get it, once you've made a profession, don't worry about nothing. Well, that ain't how I was, boy, I'll tell you right now. Don't, I can speak from experience, not just hearsay. The word of God's right, but man, I tell you what, I backslid on God as bad as you can. And every time I'd lay my head down, I'd say, God, please don't let me die like this. I don't want to go to hell. I wasn't comfortable one bit. Might have started out a little bit comfortable. Boy, it didn't last long. Thank God for convicting power. Anybody, anything on your heart before we get into the service? Amen. Amen. Me and Gannon was at the, uh, with the, the family was at the beach last week, and, and uh, me and Gannon was sitting up there in the sand, and, and he said, Dad, I want to go get in the water. And uh, I could tell it was real rough. And I had no business taking him out there. It was just the rip and current was pretty bad. And, but I, I took him out there anyways. And I got him out there, and, and uh, at the time, I was just a little bit, just wasn't even chest deep. Hold him up, he couldn't touch, so I just hold him up. And a rip curve got me. And it, at, one, at one point, I was, on, I was on, I could feel the ground, I could stand up. And the next thing I know, I couldn't touch him. And I was starting to panic. And I, and I was trying to stay calm for him, and, and I, but I knew I was going under. I was up to my chin at this point, him taking us back. And then all of a sudden, a wave came back and pushed me back up on the ground. And, and, uh, and I think about the times that, uh, that, that God's done that for me. Amen. And that's not the first Amen. time he's done it.
Praise the Lord. All right. Turn in your Bibles. Hebrews chapter number 5. Probably won't be before you very long this morning. Hebrews chapter number 5, verse number 11. When you find your place, say amen. I'm in a mess. I've lost both of my pair of glasses and just got these old readers. <laughs> so you, I'll have to fight with these things a little bit. All right. Of whom you have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when ye, for the time when you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that you this milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You can be seated. I want to go back to verse number 11. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. What Paul's saying right here, just like most preachers, he said, I got a whole lot to say. I got a whole lot to tell you, but he said, uh, these things are hard to be uttered. He's not saying, I don't understand it. Uh, he's not saying, I don't get it. Uh, he's not even saying, you're not going to get it. Paul's saying, I got a whole lot to say. He said, but it's hard for me to even say it sometimes. Uh, he said, because you've got dull of your hearing. And I'm afraid that's a lot of going on. In the church houses today, even right here in our church, sometimes uh, God will give me a message and I know that it's for our church. I know that God's uh, laid it on my heart. It'll eat at me all week and then I'll get up here and prepare and prepare for the week and I get up here and preach my heart out and you look back and, and you can just see it in people's eyes. You got people sleeping. You got uh, people digging for stuff. You got people that's looking off. They're not even really paying attention uh, to what thus saith uh, the word of God and, and they will sometimes I believe uh, that we've been in so many services uh, I mean you look I'll just stop again a lot of the new folks that's just recently been saved or, or families that's just got back in here uh, man they're hanging on to every word uh, that's being said they're listening and paying attention uh, to the singing they're on fire for it but a lot of times it's those uh, that's been in this thing for a long time and they've heard about every verse in this Bible has been preach to them. Uh, they've heard a million sermons. They've heard a thousand songs. And if we ain't careful, we'll come in here and we'll just sit in the house of God and our hearing is dull uh, to the Word of God. This Word of God is quick and sharp than to any two-edged sword. You know what that word quick means? It's alive. We are to come in here uh, hungry for the Word, uh, wanting to receive the Word, excited about the Word. We ought not come in here uh, dull of hearing uh, uh, to the word but we are to come in here uh, with a zeal in our heart and excited to hear what God's man has got to say from God's word. Uh, this is the true and living uh, word of God that was pinned down by men of old uh, who were moved on by the Holy Spirit. Uh, there was a man I was reading this week uh, he was debating. He said I don't know why uh, that you King James preachers uh, think that's the only word of God. He said there's all kind of different variations of the word of God. That's what's wrong with us. Uh, we've got dull of hearing this whole thing and we think we're above it and we think it's outdated. Uh, this old King James Bible, it's not outdated and it's here for reproof and rebuke for you and me uh, so that we can stand before God one day, amen, in the position uh, that he would have us to stand. As a man in this church told me something the other day, we'd went to another church service and I was sitting right there and we was talking 
up before service started and, and he told me this and I said, hand me a pen and a paper. I pinned it down. I said, I'm going to preach that. Well, brother, I'm preaching it this morning. Uh, but we're sitting up there and uh, somebody said something about rats. I'm scared to death of rats. I ain't going to have one. Even, even little, I ain't call them little old bitty mice about that big. I call them rats, brother. I'm scared of them. Uh, you can throw a snake on me and I'll get that thing off of me. Uh, you can throw a spider on me. That don't really bother me. Uh, but if it's a mouse or a rat, hey, buddy, I'm in serious trouble. I left my camping truck out there and left some food in the back. And the other day I went out there and I opened, I opened the bed of it up and I seen a little field mouse uh, run down there. I screamed and run back. I went in the house and got Riley. I said, Riley, I want you to go down there to the, car, the shop. We got carburetor clean. I didn't do nothing. Uh, she was spraying it. I made her get everything out of my truck. I made her take it to the car wash and spray under the bed mask down in the hose. I said, I ain't driving that thing or doing nothing with it until uh, you get that out of there. Oh, Elijah thought he was going to pull a trick on me over at Hardy's and they had a big old rat in the shoe box, man, and he started bringing it out. Before I know it, son, I had my pistol out. I said, boy, I'll kill you. I said, you get close to me with that thing. I said, I'll kill you and go to prison. I won't take nothing about it. Uh, one of them boys said, man, he's serious. You better put that up. I, it's a phobia that I have, and I can't help it. And we was talking about that. And the, uh, Dwayne Ray, he told me, he said, we was talking about something like that. He said, I got some old, they got, they got animals and chickens and stuff. And anytime you have that, uh, you're going to have rats. And he said, I begin to put out some poison uh, for them rats. And he said, man, it was a doing a good work. He said, it was a killing them rats uh, right and left. He said, that poison uh, was having a, a positive effect. I was getting rid of them. But he said, you know what? Uh, he said after a time and after a while he said that poison no longer had effect on them rats it wasn't killing them no more he said you know matter of fact I wrote it down he said I believe they even enjoy it now uh, he said they'll come and eat it it don't have an effect on them and I thought my God uh, that's the way it is uh, with Christians amen hey we'll go out and God will save us and get us out of a lifestyle of sin uh, he'll set us on the solid foundation establish our goal uh, forgive us and forget about our sin but all of a sudden you know what uh, we'll get to dabbling back in of uh, the things of the world and you know how it usually starts it usually starts by missing Wednesday night service uh, you say well preacher that ain't no big deal I'm here to tell you it's a big deal amen uh, the Bible said to be faithful amen over a few things Hey, you get to missing on Wednesday night and then you get to missing on Sunday night and the next thing you know uh, you find yourself not being faithful uh, to the house of God. I talked to a boy this week and we began to talk about things of God. He used to be in this church. Uh, he was on fire uh, but he no longer goes here and he said, I don't. He said, I'll tell you what happened. He said, I got a little bit discouraged about something and he said, it got me down in the molly grubs and he said, I missed one service. He said, then I missed two services and he said, now I sit here at home and I don't even go to church no more. He said, I don't even realize how it happened Hey, that's the way sin does. It'll sneak in a little bit. Uh, somebody will hurt your feelings, amen. Or something will get you down and depressed. And the first thing we want to do is we want to quit God, amen. He's the only hope and help we got. Hey, you can quit me. Uh, you can quit your job. Uh, you can quit playing on the ball team. Uh, but don't quit God. He loves you and he died for you. And he's the only hope you got uh, to get through this thing, amen. But you go to mission, the next thing you know, you find yourself doing stuff that you didn't want to do. And when you first start, it'll break your heart. How you know, preacher? I've been there. I've been there. Growed up in this church, raised up in here. Had some things happened years ago, just nothing but the old devil. Church had some trouble. Lots of folks left. I left as a young man. Thought, well, I'll go somewhere else. Went somewhere else for a little while, didn't suit you. The next thing you know, brother, I was out of church. Wasn't doing nothing wrong, just wasn't going to church. That's wrong. Amen. Somebody help me this morning. But you know what? The next thing I found myself, I wasn't hanging out with the church crowd no more. Because I had alienated myself from them. I started finding new friends, brother laddie. 
Them new friends didn't act like I used to act. They didn't act like my church act. They didn't act like my family acted. They acted different. Uh, they went different places. Uh, they'd done different things. Lori, a lot of it I'd never done. It was new to me. And you know what? Boy, the devil made it look so pretty. And he made it look so awesome. And he made it look so desirable. And then when I first time I stepped out and done something that I didn't want to do, Avery, it convicted my heart. And I thought, God, I shouldn't have done that. I won't do it again. And I didn't see them friends for a while. But you know what? Uh, then I went back, Stephen. And over and over, the next thing you know, I was living a habitual lifestyle of sin. And it no longer affected me. It no longer bothered me. That's a dangerous place to be. Uh, when we get dull uh, from hearing the word of God and get dull to listening to what the man of God's got to say, uh, let me throw you a warning this morning. Uh, whatever you do, uh, whatever's going on in your life, uh, you stay faithful to the house of God. Uh, you stay faithful to God. Uh, I might do you wrong on accident. Uh, somebody else might do you wrong. But he ain't never done you wrong. He ain't going to do you wrong. Hey, be faithful to him and to his house. It's for your benefit. Amen. Lord Dwayne said not only is that not having any effect on them rats, he said, I believe they're liking it now. He said, I'm going to have to switch it up. That's the way sometimes we get up here and brother well, and I believe we've heard good preaching so much that it don't even move us no more. It don't affect us no more. My God, how in the world uh, do we get tired of the good things of God? I don't understand it. I have to get up. I don't have to. God allows me uh, to get up here and preach. God allows me to get in his word. And I, I, I ain't going to lie. They Sometimes I have to crawl up here because uh, this flesh don't feel like it. But as soon as I crack this book and I feel that anointing from on high, they ain't nowhere or nothing else I'd rather do uh, than be in God's house uh, doing God's word and doing what he would have me to do. I don't want it to get old. I don't want it to have no effect on me. I don't want to be dull in my hearing. I love hearing uh, the things of God. I love hearing old time preaching. I love it when preachers get on me and God shines a light on me and shows me those places I can move up in my life. You know why that does me good? Because I know that he loves me and I know that he's wanting the best for my life. It's those times uh, when he leaves me alone uh, that I get the most worried and I get scared about that situation. Uh, let's don't sit here, church, and be a stiff-necked generation and say, hey, I ain't going to do what that word says. I'm going to do it my way. Hey, God has put each and every one of you right here. Uh, you've got a spot. You've got a seat. You've got a pew. And God expects you to be here. I expect you to be here. Amen. And like I said, it's for your benefit. Amen. He's done so much for us. How can we not? I mean, I'll stop right now. I'll stop right now and give you the floor if you can tell me when God ain't faithful to you. Come on. He's been faithful to me. He saved me from having to die and go to hell. My Lord. I say if we could ever get a hold of that and how bad hell's going to be. David, if we could just get a hold of that, I wouldn't even get to preach. Y'all come in here shouting her down every service, uh, thanking God that we don't have to die and go to hell. And not only that, he gave me a benefit package, amen, uh, that beats anything you'll get anywhere else. I'm glad that he said you have not uh, because you ask not. He said knock and it shall be opened unto you. You know what our problem is and why we get so discouraged sometimes in our prayer life and in the things we're praying about because I'd say nine out of ten times uh, we're praying out of the will of God, amen. God help us to pray in his will. And if we'll pray in his will, then it'll be added unto us. Amen. Amen. But we see here that sin at first, it won't bother you. And then you find yourself where you even enjoy it. The Bible said there's pleasure in sin for a season. But it also says you'll reap what you sow. I tell you what, I lay in the bed sometimes at night. Or driving down the road, Avery. And I think, my God, if I could just buy or pay so much and go back and not do the, some of the stuff I've done. Yeah, I'd say, go. I ain't got much money in the bank, but I'd say, Kim, write the check. 
Kim right to change. And we sit up here and we warn these kids. I had preachers warning me too, but I'm reaching out to you again. Not even kids, everybody in here. Hey, get in here. Uh, get a hold of the things of God. Hey, get a hold of it. Get a grasp on it. This thing's about to wrap up just any day. Uh, you need all the power uh, that you can have. And it comes from being in the Word. It comes from being in church. It comes from getting in. Don't you dare uh, go home and tell your kids that this Word of God is outdated. Don't you say that preacher he's just a meddling in your home if you think I'm meddling in your home I'm doing it to help you and your children amen and it don't happen just like that scientists done an experiment and you can take a frog get you a boiling pot of water put it on the stove you can take that frog Stephen they say and throw it now partners that he'll jump right out he knows that's hot. He knows it's hurt. I don't want in this. This is bad for me. But they say you can take that same frog, put him in a nice cool pan of water, put it on the stove, Dwayne, and turn that thing on low. And they said that water will start to simmer. It'll start to get hot. And said so the next thing you know, that water will be to a full boil. And that frog will sit right there and cook himself to death. Because he didn't Catch the slow fade. And all of a sudden, he's dead. It can happen to you, and it can happen to me. All we got to do is start slipping, start doing this, going here, going there, get out of the will of God. And I promise you, I promise you, the devil's going to show you a good time. The devil's going to tell you, and I'm going to call you and say, well, preacher, we ain't really doing nothing wrong. And the next thing you know, that frog's in that same pot, and he's dead. That reminds me of a young man named Eutychus. Bible said that Paul was preaching. Bible said he was preaching until midnight. And they said there was much light in the upper room. That young boy was in where he needed to be, was he not? He was at church. He was in the church service. He was sitting right there. He was under a great man of God. Paul, one of the greatest men, a man that's ever pinned down anything in this book. He was a preacher under the anointing. That young man was in the right place. He was in the right building. He wasn't in the dark. He was faithful. But yet the Bible said he was sitting right there in church in a deep sleep. Now you just don't all of a sudden go to get in a deep sleep. Well, I'll take that back. My wife can. We can lay down at night. We can be talking. 30 seconds, she's snoring. And I lay there for three hours trying to go to sleep. But for most normal folks, you don't just fall into a deep sleep. First you start dozing and napping, not paying attention. That young boy, he was there in the right place. He was in the house of God. He was under good preaching. But the Bible said that he fell in a deep sleep. Fell out the window. He wasn't leaning in. Heard an old preacher say, you know what happened to that boy? He said there's more leaning out than there was leaning in. Yeah. Amen. You can be here, but if your mind's somewhere else this morning, you're worried about hurry up and going here and going there, doing this and doing that, then worried about getting in, then you're leaning out. And if you ain't careful, you'll find yourself in a deep sleep. And that young boy fell out and lost his life. God help us not to go to sleep in the last days. God help us to be alive and awake and willing to do something for God. Let's don't be like that frog and let's don't be like them rats. Let's get in here and get a hold of it. Let's get a hold of the word. Don't be just Hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. You can come in here and listen to everything that I say, but if we don't apply it to our life, it'll be of no effect. If you've got a rash or you've got something or poison oak or something, and you go to the doctor and you're in excruciating pain, Ricky, and he says, here's you some save. If you'll put this on that, it'll go away. If you just take it home, put it in the medicine cabinet, and don't apply it, it won't do you no good. 
I'm afraid a lot of us are going in the same situation over and over and over and we're beating our head against the wall because we're not taking what the word says and applying it to our life. You want God's blessings on your life? Uh, you want to go further? You want to do greater things? Then start applying what the word says to your life. Yeah. Don't be just hearers of the word. Be doers of the word. Uh, Hearing it won't change you. Doing it will. Right. And you know what? It'll affect somebody else around you. I said, boy, I want you to look at old Dale. He's doing what the word said. Look what it's doing in his life. I want that for my life. Amen. God help us. Not to be just hearers, but doers. Amen. Diane, would you come to the piano? I'm done. Every head bowed, never eye closed. God help us not to be comfortable. In the house of God. Help us not to be immune to the word. If she plays something softly this morning. Maybe you need a, a spark this morning. Maybe you need some uplift in your life. And you feel like I'm just getting dull. I'm coming. I'm coming preacher. I'm faithful. But I just ain't getting what I need for myself. I'm not moving in a direction that's satisfying me. Maybe I'm sitting here with things on my heart and things on my mind. And you want to come this morning and say, God, prod me just a little bit. God, prod me a little bit so I would be a doer of your word and not just a hearer. Maybe your faithfulness is not what it ought to be. Say, God, would you help me to be more faithful? God, would you help me to lay aside some of these things that are causing me to miss out on your blessings? God, would you help me to see what's the most important thing in my life? And God, help me. Hey, I know there's a lot of things that we enjoy. There's a lot of things that we love. And there's a lot of things we do that there's nothing wrong. But God, help us. To put him first. Maybe you this morning to say, Preacher, I've kind of lost my joy. I still love the Lord. I ain't doing nothing wrong. I want to be more faithful. I want to be more diligent. I want to be on fire for God. But I've just kind of lost that joy. I've been there. Don't beat yourself up. But with nobody looking around, would you just raise your hand up and say, Preacher, would you pray for me that God would give me that joy back? For serving the Lord. God bless that hand. God bless that hand. God bless that hand. He can give you that joy back. He can give you that desire back. And I'm going to help you folks pray that God will. You know why? Because he loves you and I love you. Lord, I ain't saying none of this or preaching none of this to beat you down. I'm trying to lift you up and let you know that Jesus loves you. And he wants the best for you. And his word is for you. And you're here this morning to hear exactly what I said. Because he loves you. And he wants you to be full of joy. And he's able to give it. There's joy in serving the Lord. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Serve him. Appreciate your attention this morning. Appreciate the word of God. Thankful for what it's done in my life. I sure ain't perfect, but I'm not what I used to be. Amen. Amen. And I'm ever more trying to read this thing and move up to it. Yeah. But you know what? It's a catch-22. Boy, we'll get to, we'll have them weeks, Andrew, when we feel like we've done pretty good. I've done pretty good this week, Lord. Man, we get in here and read this and see how some of them old apostles did. What they did. I'm like, Lord, I ain't done nothing this week. I ain't done nothing this week. But boy, I'm glad that the Lord still loves me and cares for me, ain't you? Anybody, anything on your heart this morning? All right, we'll stand and be dismissed. Visitors, please come back. Be with us again. I love each and every one of you. Want the best for everybody. Brother Dave Melvin, would you just...